is Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to the final. I'm not. I'm still not ready to do this. Final episode of Tropical Rouge Pretty Cure. Of course, you're probably already gonna know, so I'm already gonna go ahead and say this. Of course, this video, aka the final one, will be probably the longest video of this playlist because this is when we're really gonna go into the deep, deep, like pros and cons of this show and how I felt truly about everybody. So <laughs> this is of course gonna, this is the thing that has been probably the longest coming. And I'm really sad that this show is over and that this is the last time for now up until the next two at least two years we will see these girls again and we'll be able to hear the sayus of these because after these girls are well technically these girls have been these sayus have been done for a while but um these five sayus are moving on to their next big thing and such and it's even sad even sadder for like um not song go one person meet audience say you because that's me because i'm from attack on titan and we are probably we're not even at the halfway point of the the second half we're like still at the beginning so i i, I really don't know when the hell that's gonna end but it's still sad but other than that let's go ahead and get started with the final episode in three two one go huh <sighs> i have been dreading this all freaking day even while i was at work i was like oh god i don't want to watch this today <laughs> Really? <laughs> One last time. <laughs> Are we just going to have a conversation with the five of them as pretty here today? <laughs> oh my god. Like, I'm going to miss this transformation, everything. But at the same time, I am excited for Delicious Party. As I've said before, um, we're all kind of hoping that Crunchyroll gives the streaming rights for this. But of course, we're not going to know until next week. They kind of really do it very last minute. Heck, I still got to make a thumbnail for Delicious Well, I mean, because see, the good thing about, like, freaking Asuka Sayu is she's in Rising Season 2, of course, and Season 1, but also Jujutsu Kaisen won that. My babies. So. <laughs> oh, damn! The fact that Himanatsu was hella quiet. No, Himanatsu. I know. Oh my god, it's hit me. It's hit me. It, it, we're, <laughs> no, I'm not ready. Oh, this is the last time we hear in this song, too. No, I can't do this. I can't. No, God. This, ugh, this is what happens when you have an all-star say you cast with a freaking singer who you know for idol master and then it's just like bruh i can't do this this is too much hella emotional my dog is over here doing whatever the heck he's doing cody what are you doing weirdo but uh, i don't want to say goodbye i mean like seriously yeah i can rewatch it but it's so it would be so different because you already know the story and stuff you just get memories of it and everything but 
the only way that I would literally get, like, that new experience if I could just erase my mind and just rewatch it. I just need these sayings to work together on another project again. Like, please! I need it. I want it in my life. Oh, I'm already getting ready to cry. Go on, tell him. Oh, there you are. I know, but... Oh, exactly. So I do know we don't really have like a villain a monster of the week today. I'm actually okay with that. Hmm? 
watching it funny. We're just showing like the moments of them in the early episodes. I can't. Yeah, you speak from the heart. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't. God, the last time I cried this hard was Kira Kira. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just need all five of them. Well, no, all four. Four. Because one of them's already an Idol Master. Miss Tongo. Oh my god, I'm not ready. <laughs> You'll do great. Hmm? Oh, babe. Not crying anymore. No more tears. Hmm? You'll be alone. Exactly. I swear to God, no. I thought they would at least be able to keep the rings. That's right. 
Oh, God, they took her out of the picture. Oh, if you only knew, you already went. I'm gonna cry again. Cause they're gonna meet again. Oh, oh God, my heart. Ah! Oh. I thought what it would have been, we would have got to see them when they're older. I'm not mad at that. It's okay. It, it seems like that is kind of the new normal that we're doing ever since with um, Healing Good. Moving on into this, they're making a second level. Okay, but hold up. Cure Precious didn't make an appearance. And I saw that she made an appearance on Twitter. There were pictures of her. So, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm confused. Um, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, alrighty. So, final thoughts on this show. I loved it. I loved it a lot. It had a lot of potential for mermaids and everything, and I'm really happy that this season aired with five people of seiyus that I never thought, maybe in the last couple of years before this season aired, that would ever be together. And sometimes, ah, <laughs> it just works. They really skipped, oh my god. They really skipped over that. Wow, that's weird. The, oh, and it could be because of the fact that Crunchyroll has the rights to it and stuff. Because with the Healing Good one, they skipped over um, the Baton Pass. So, good thing I kind of saw it on Twitter and stuff. But, okay. I, I truly love this show. Yes, it did have some misses here or there just like any other pretty cure season because everybody enjoys a pretty cure season there's always one season that you know everyone's going to love and then maybe that one person is going to hate or everyone is going to hate but that one person is going to love i know for me like 
it, it sometimes it could be characters why I didn't like the season as much and such. But this, with these five, with these core five, I already loved them day one. When I saw the designs and everything, despite who all the sayus were, up until I found out who they all were, and fangirled even more over these girls, and I was like, this is going to be the greatest, like, all-star thing. When you're looking at other Pretty Cures from the past and the big sayus that have gone on to bigger and better things, like, when you look at the cast of, yes, Pretty Cure 5 and Slash 5 Go-Go, or you look at um, Heart Catch, or you look at Go Princess, or you look at Smile, um and such though and, and and adding this and then also healing good and maybe also star twinkle those are the one nope i can also add um my sky those are the ones that have had really big powerhouse stays that are very popular um either after they did pretty cure before they did pretty cure while they did pretty cure and such and so this was one of those where it was like, oh, damn, like the, I got the same feels of when I watched Mahotsky and such, where I was like, there's three seiyus that I've known for vastly different roles that they've done. And to have a whole year with that, with those voice actresses voicing those characters, but not only voicing them, but also voicing iconic characters that they've done in the past in newer seasons and such was very interesting. I mean, let's go back to last year. It was very interesting to have season two of Late Back Camp come out like Tuesday or Thursday and then Saturday would come and then the person who does Kirby also did Songo or when Jujutsu Kaisen was just airing and stuff and how Jujutsu Kaisen was getting very popular and then, you know, the girl who plays Nobara also got a different chance to, you know, pave the way for, like, her, you know, um, her acting abilities for this. And so I'm really excited to see what she does next. For Manatsu's character, that's the, sa uh, say, that's the same thing with this going into her playing Jolene and Jojo. And that's the same thing for Mikasa's say going into whatever the heck she is going to do next. But I am very happy that we got to have these five and who I, I don't really know who is playing Cure Precious but all I know is like for the next girls I know Cure Yum Yum she's played by um Miku from the Sinfo Gear series and then plus the female villain who I'm thinking is the final cure for Delicious Party that girl is voiced by Darkness from Kanesuba, so if she is the final character, then, then I'm really excited for that. But now we're going to go into how I feel about each character. So we're going to go, we're going to start forwards this time instead of me going backwards like I did last year with Healing Good. So we're going to start with Manasu. Do I feel like with Manasu, when I first met her, she was probably going to be one of my favorites? A little bit of yeah, a little bit of no. Um... I thought at first she was going to be how I kind of felt about Hikaru from Star Twinkle, where she was going to be, re I was going to like her at first, but she was going to get very, very more annoying. But honestly, I didn't get that with her. I loved her, her hopes, her wants, her dreams, everything. Her connection with Laura was really sweet. The connection that she had with Asuka, Sango, and Mirodin before Laura became the final hero of the series, but having all five of them together and little tidbits and moments was like the sweetest fucking thing ever. And I really, once again, commend her voice actors for doing that. This was a girl who came up after freaking, um, what's the show that she did? Because <laughs> she plays one of my other favorite characters in that show. The, um, How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift? Coming off from that show onto this was very interesting. I love the fact that, you know, with all five of these seiyus and ish, they were able to do that comedy well. Because it was like, mm, can it always happen for this? But with Manatsu specifically, I thought she was a really interesting leader. There were times where, like, I felt like I was going to cry, get angry with her because she could emphasize with her a lot. And... I think as of right now, she she's number one. I mean, and, and that's crazy to say, because way before that, 
it was it was a I think it was like a three or a four way tie between Cure um, Cure Whip, Flora, um, Miracle, and then uh, what uh, pff, Grace from Freaking Healing Good. But <laughs> times have changed. All right, now we're gonna go on to Miss Laura, our queen, and such. All right, so <laughs> of course I think, and I've said this time and time again. Of course, Laura has been my favorite because Laura was very um, expressions. I, 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 any any expression she made was a fucking meme. Any freaking facial expression she made, it was somebody's Twitter page. I mean, not Twitter page, Twitter profile picture. It was a, the, the freaking banner when you opened up a Twitter page and stuff. It was the best thing ever. You were just like, that's a mood. I fucking love it. This is my girl. I understand her. Like, this is going to be that one girl that even so many years later, people are going to come back and they're like, look at this chick. Look at this freaking chick. But I will say the one thing that I kind of disliked about what the writers did with Laura specifically, but this is a curse with Pretty Cure is when the newest cure comes out, they kind of really take the other three cures or how many other cures are in the group and they place the other ones in the back. Oh, God, that felt weird. Um, they put the other ones in the back and they place like the main two, aka Manitsu and Laura, as like the front ones, the breadwinners of the group and such. And so it almost felt like any episode that focused on maybe Songo Midori and our Asuka still kind of had like that 120% on Laura even though it was supposed to be focusing on them like the one episode about Asuka with the tennis thing even though that was all about Asuka at the end of the day it still felt like a Laura moment and such and it was like oh my god like I, I love you to death but go sit your behind on the side but I, at the end of the day I still love Laura she's still one of my favorite characters like I said all, all of them are my favorite and such all right so Miss mm, I think Songo would be the next one in the meet all right Miss Songo aka Kirby from <laughs> Laidback Camp slash Shin Sato from Idolmaster this was a character, in my opinion, I feel like she, between her, really, her, Midorin, and Asuka, the three underdogs of this show, personally. I loved when we got episodes on Sango and her beauty and stuff and her wanting cute things and learning about cosmetics and everything because as someone who was slowly but surely... Um, when this show started getting more and more into makeup and stuff because beforehand I was into makeup and stuff and learning about you know the dramas and everything about it and everything but I was like it's about making yourself feel good and looking good and stuff I think you know some of the outfits Sanko had I loved so much and it's <laughs> it's so freaking adorable because if a lot of you didn't know D4DJ one of my favorite games actually did a collab with one of my favorite groups mermaid and funny enough <laughs> um she's not my best girl in mermaid but i still love her same thing with the other three because my best girl is really rika now um i love the fact of who they chose songo to be with because i was like that makes the most sense they both love something with cosmetics and everything and the picture with those two together just makes me fangirl every time because it's just like oh my god it looks like big sister little sister and such and I love it so much if you have not seen the arts for um the d4dj mermaid group with the tropical rouge pretty girl girls highly highly suggest it hell they're getting ready to do another collab with heart catch um with one girl from um Lyrical Lily, two girls from Happy Around, and one girl from Rondo. And honestly, I cannot wait to see how that's going to look in the next couple of days and such. But yes, next, Miss Mirrorin. Okay, so when I was still watching, um, by the time I concluded Yes, Pretty Cure 5 and such, you could see how Mirrorin and Komachi were very, very similar. And because it was so funny because like one time when I was like really sitting down and I was looking and I was thinking about stuff and everything about Mironin, I was like, damn, she's so freaking similar to Komachi. And so it feels like Mironin is 
some of the things that they wanted to do with Komachi, but they couldn't. So they were like, we're going to take this and this and we're going to run with it. But I, I did enjoy that, though. I thought it was very interesting. I love the way, you know, how she was very similar with Mito. I mean, Komachi and expect she was her biggest critique critiquer and such. Headsmiths, we all are and such. And so with the fact is that, you know, at the time when we got that backstory on her, where she had an older senpai and they really didn't really like the story of what she did and saying that it wouldn't do the greatest and how in a way because of that it sent her in a deep downward spiral of depression was the most heartbreaking thing and I really think her seiyu did like a damn good job on that. I think she took a lot of things that she did when um she was recording her sessions for Violet Evergarden because there <laughs> if I rewatch any Midorin episode and literally think about like it, it's <laughs> if it's not Midorin and I'm thinking of her as Violet Evergarden I will just burst into tears because if you have not seen Violet Evergarden I really highly recommend that I think the seiyu for Midorin did amazing she did beautiful in this show as well and such but I will say yes she was underused a lot I would have also loved and this was something a lot of people said when um she first came on as Cure Papaya, a lot of people wished that the glasses thing with her had stayed a little bit longer or we got to see a little bit more of that. Same thing with um with Songo's like triangle thing. How when we had those episodes specifically focusing on their on their episodes, on their powers was very, very like mwah, like I needed that ish. And them growing it into something even better was hella good. Now finally Miss Nobara herself slash Raftalia from Shield Hero, aka Miss Asuka Senpai. Um, what uh, what can I say about Asuka? I, I loved her tomboy ass. I I really oh ooh, 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 ooh. I got it I got it. I really kind of wish because when I looked at the art for her and Dahlia for the game, I really 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 freaking really truly wish we got to see more of her playing that fake Animal Crossing game or her getting into more cutesy looking things and stuff and you know her growing up into this woman technically by the end of the show you all get to see all five five of these girls growing up into women and such and I feel like when I watch the um the Tropical Rouge x Heart Catch Pretty Cure movie crossover I think that's when we're truly going to see them like evolve more into characters and such because of course with 40 46 46 episodes it's a lot of information that you kind of really have to remember about each girl I love that she did tennis that was very interesting she was different um she did give me feels to Akira from Kira Kira what's her face from heart catch especially because of the fact is like Oh, she's really beautiful. Like, she is very masculine but feminine at the same time and such. Like, her seiyu, once again, that that's freaking my senpai from Bunny Girl Senpai. And she did flawless in it. I, all these girls did flawless. And it was good. It was so good. But, like, I think my biggest problem was the Animal Crossing thing. I really wish we got to see a lot more cute things. I mean, of course, that one Cinderella-type episode with the panda head. Loved that because, you know, of course, she was fangirling over that. Um, her friendship slash teammate with the student council president was very interesting. I do kind of wish we got a little bit more on that, though. Because I remember there was a time, like, early early on I think by the time when way before Laura was confirmed to be the final cure she I really thought that the student council president was going to be the final cure I think I, I think I'll, I went on that for several weeks um for it until that was when eventually I found out about Laura and I was like oh okay because I kind of wanted it to be very similar to like with Pretty, I'm not pretty cure. <laughs> Go princess pretty cure with the one girl who had braids in her hair who was friends with Haruka and such and her roommate for a whole entire year. The one who liked to make the book and everything who eventually made the princess book about Haruka as cure Flora. A lot of people really truly wanted her to be the final cure of the series but in the end it was Toa aka you know other best girl and such. 
And so I, what the, another thing that I loved about it was with their friendship or partnership is that on Twitter, and especially with the fan arts on Twitter, you got to see her partner dressed as Cure Flamingo. And I thought that was really sweet and adorable. But, I mean, uh, even though, like I said, we did not get to see them older and such, which is the typical ending for Pretty Cure, because eventually you have to see them grow up and everything. But because of the fact is with time consuming and such because I feel like maybe this show just like with Healing Good had a lot more wanting to do for um their episode list but because of the fact is with the fact that COVID screwed up Healing Good and they had to hurry up and finish Healing Good it could also mean the same thing with this so there's possibly like unaired episodes that of course we will never possibly see the light of day like we really didn't get a Christmas episode with this group and of course, always truly my favorite episodes are usually Christmas themed or holiday themed episodes. But as I've said before, my favorite episodes was the comedy episode, which was very hilarious because all five of those girls, say you wise, have been in comedy as animes. And then the one episode where the monster of a week was the squid looking fish and how the animation looked especially going into last week's as well with certain like styles giving feels or like mm, shonen jump quality which I loved a lot and I'm if <laughs> I pray that we do kind of get to see that again with delicious party but I feel like with delicious party it's going to be very similar to kira kira where it's not going to be a lot of kicking and punching where we're going back into oh we're going to use the magic wand a lot maybe i'm not really 100 percent sure i do hate the fact that we did not get to see the new girl aka kurt precious in this episode because that is a typical thing Ma i mean how manitsu made an appearance in the final episode of healing good so it was a little weird not to see her in today's episode but of course when we get into next week's uh first episode of delicious party that is when i officially get my first official thoughts on her and everything i'm really excited to see her though um and get into the world and the lore of delicious party but other than that guys that is my reaction view towards the entire season of tropical rouge pretty cure if you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Magic Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially, y'all, next Saturday, Sunday, for the first episode of Delicious Party Pretty Cure. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.